Hi, it's Damien Levesque from Scubalon Creative, here for Boris FX to show Avid editors the new features in Sapphire 2019. The new whiplash transition is like S swish pan on steroids. What it does is it multiplies the A and B sides of the edit as many times as you want, and it creates a really dynamic and fluid transition effect. The direction of the swish and the number of copies that you see is controlled by the Shift X and Shift Y parameters. It defaults to negative four swishing from right to left, but if you want to change directions, you can just make it a positive number and switch it to four. The whip out parameter changes the ending acceleration and it creates this bounce or snap effect depending on how you have it set at the end of the transition that's, uh, that's actually really cool. It's like the image kind of goes outside the frame and then snaps back into its final landing position. Things get really fun when you begin to play with the rotation and scale parameters. One thing you can do to make the transition look a little bit more seamless is you can change the wrap parameter from tile to reflect. Scale is also really cool because it ramps the image size over the duration of the transition, which can make it feel more natural. You can further customize the look of your transition with the RGB blur and shift parameters. By increasing mix RGB and the blur amount, you get sort of this chroma shifting effect, which is really neat. By increasing the brightness, you can make the transition a bit more flashy. There are many different transition styles you can achieve with S Whiplash, and like all the Sapphire transitions and effects, you have a variety of pre-created styles to choose from in the preset browser. Pixel Sort is a new effect under the Stylize category that can be used to create a variety of cool looks. Those of you acquainted with Sapphire will be familiar with the controls and what they do, as they appear in many of the other filters. Threshold, Sort Angle, and Sort Direction will affect the amount and trajectory of the pixel sorting. The sort type will change its overall look along with the mode, which you can switch between linear, radial, and circle. Pixel sort can be especially cool when used with Mocha's masking tools. Notice how, using Mocha's new magnetic spline tool, I can quickly select and track the car. Then, back in the effect editor, invert my Mocha mask, which applies the pixel sort effect to everything outside of it. The new Essentials UI in Mocha is a simplified layout that includes new icons and tools that make it easier to learn and navigate. The layouts can now be changed to show different tool sets by selecting from this drop-down menu. New to Mocha in Sapphire 2019 are several new tools that will enable you to work faster. The Magnetic Spline tool takes a lot of the headache and hassle out of rotoscoping. Simply click and drag along the edge of an object that you're selecting, clicking occasionally to lock the spline into place. The freehand spline tool allows you to draw any shape you want by simply clicking and dragging. While using the magnetic spline tool, you can easily switch to freehand mode by holding down the mouse button as you move the cursor. When you release the mouse, it returns to magnetic mode. And now, there are rectangle and ellipse creation tools for quick selections that don't require complex spline shapes. This new version of Mocha has also been optimized with high DPI monitors in mind, making the interface extra sharp and easy to see. The lens designer in Sapphire 2019 now has the preset browser integrated into it, making it easier and faster to find the look that best suits your needs. The components tab includes many presets for elements that you can easily click to add into your design. At the bottom of your screen, you will notice that All Triggers is now the default option so that you can see how the lens flare will change whenever it interacts with different objects in your frame. On the top toolbar, a new button has been added so that you can include a multi-streak element in your customized designs. And now with all multi-spot or multi-streak elements, you can vary the spacing, size, and hue. I'd like to take advantage of these new features using S Lens Flare Auto Track to customize a lens flare and track it onto the headlights of one of my cars here. Since Lens Flare Auto Track tracks the flare to the brightest spot on the image, we'll actually need to create a bright spot for Lens Flare Auto Track to follow on the layer below. The first thing I'll do is duplicate my layer. With the bottom layer selected, in the effect editor, click Edit Mocha. Since the headlight is already a simple ellipse shape, in order for me to track it, the easiest thing for me to do would be to use the new ellipse tool and drag it over the area that I want to track. Since Mocha tracks a plane of pixels rather than points, I want to make sure that it has enough information to read. So I'm being careful to not make the shape too small.
click forward and let Mocha do its thing. Once it's tracked, I'll go back to the beginning of the shot and resize my spline to make it a little bit smaller. I'll do this at the beginning and the end of the shot. Auto keyframing is turned on by default. Mind you, this is the shape that the lens flare is going to follow, so you don't want it to be too small or the flare won't be as visible. However, if you were to keyframe the size of this shape, you could trigger some cool effects with the shape and brightness of the lens flare. Click Save, then close Mocha. Back in the Effect Editor, under the Mocha category, choose Show Only Mocha, which will show you the mat that Mocha is creating for you. Now, on the layer above, choose One Track Below from the Track drop-down menu. And voila, all of a sudden, our lens flare follows the shape that we just created. Now let's change the look of the flare using the updated lens designer. Click Edit Lens. I'm going to uncheck Show Background so that the lens flare is easier to see. Now I'll pick the flare that I want from the Featured tab. I like Signal Beacon. I'm going to customize this a little bit. I'm going to add a new multi-stripe element to it. Make some adjustments. First I'll change the offset. Adjust the color to blue. Down under multi-streak options, I want to increase my spread, vary the size and the hue. I like how this looks, so I'll click OK. Now my beautiful customized lens flare appears and tracks to the headlight. New to the builder is Animated Shape, which allows you to keyframe the size, shape, and position of the shape of your choosing. On the surface, this might not seem that exciting, when in fact, Animated Shape has opened up a world of new possibilities for what you can create using the builder in Sapphire 2019. Namely, the Animated Shape can be used to create animated matte transitions like these. To access these transitions, simply drop an S transition from the builder category onto a cut point. In the Effect Editor, choose Load Preset. In the Preset Browser, click the Builder Effects button to filter the selections down to only transitions that were created using the Builder. There you will find a collection of presets that were created using Animated Shape. If you're feeling adventurous and would like to create your own transition, I'd like to show you how easy it was for me to create one myself. This is a two second transition, so the first thing you'll want to do is adjust the timing in the Effect Editor. That way, the Builder's Preview window will show you the proper duration of the transition as you're working on it. First, disconnect the Dissolve node and set it aside. We won't be using it. To create the blurred look revealed by the stripes, we'll need to first make a new layer. I used Warp Transform, then scaled it up with the Z parameter. Then I blurred it with just the basic Blur node. Now let's make our stripes. We'll do that with a new Animated Shape node. Increase the relative height so that it spans the screen. Set the relative width to your liking. Using the center parameter, adjust the X coordinate so that the shape is completely off the screen at the beginning of the effect. Now I'll just move my playhead in the preview window to the end of the effect and adjust the Shift X parameter so that the bar moves to the opposite side of the screen. When I hit play, you'll notice that nothing's moving yet. So let's change the animation behavior to bounce our shape from one side of the screen to the other. I'll adjust my slow, in, out, and middle parameters to make the movement a little more natural. When you hit play, you'll see the result. Now, I repeated this process two more times, one with a shape that just moves across the screen right to left, another with a shape that moves left to right, I also played with the start time parameter so that the shapes weren't moving in unison. I thought this made it feel a little bit more organic. Now let's combine the shapes together. The best way to do this is with the composite node under tools. Plug the first two shapes into the two inputs on the composite node, then grab another node. Plug the first composite node output into the front and your third animated shape into the back. The stripes will act as our mat, which will mask out the blurred layer we just created. Now it's time to put the pieces together. We want to stack our blurred stripes onto our source background. To do this, we'll use the Blend node. Blend has a matte input on it that mats out the source B input. When I connect our blur layer and from layer, you can see that we achieve the desired effect once we've plugged the moving shapes into the matte input. Now let's create the animated shape that reveals the incoming footage. To make life a little easier, I just duplicated my first animated shape and changed the parameters a little bit. 
Because I wanted to see more of the transition before the wipe happens, I delayed the start time of this animated shape significantly. I also keyframed the relative width parameter a bit. We'll combine our shape and the incoming footage the same way using the blend node. Finally, let's assemble the A and B sides of the edit using the wipe line transition. I'm going to grab it from the components rather than using the default transition node that we disconnected at the beginning. The reason for this is because when you grab it from the components, there is an amount parameter on it that allows me to control the timing and acceleration of the transition. The first thing I'll do is change the angle to zero. When I play the transition back, you'll notice right away that we lose most of the beauty of the blurred stripes. So I actually want to delay the start time of the transition. I'd like it to more or less match the stripe that reveals the incoming edit. I'll do this by positioning the playhead at the point where I want the wipe to begin and then tracking its progress until the end. I'll then play with the start, middle, and end times as well as the curve until I achieve the look I like. Finally, connect the wipe line to result and hit OK. As always, once you've created a look that you like, you can save it for later use in the preset browser by selecting Save Preset in the Effect Editor. Thanks for watching. Be sure to follow Boris Effects on YouTube and social media for the latest training materials for Continuum, Sapphire, Mocha, and all of the Boris Effects products.